Hello and welcome back to the Coders Legacy channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to measure the running time of your Scrapey application. Scraping can take quite a while, especially if the website is quite big or you're scraping multiple websites. So it's useful to know how long your spider is taking so that you can make optimizations accordingly and then observe how the time taken reduces. Or maybe you need the start and end time in your code for some kind of calculation, or maybe you just want to store it somewhere. So these are the various reasons why you might want to see the start and end time. Let's see how we can achieve this. You may not have realized this, but Scrapey by default, whenever you execute a spider, it actually prints out the start and end time. This here is some code of mine that I've developed from a previous video where we scrape through this website on quotes. Basically, it has a bunch of, bunch of quotes from famous people and then we just scrape all of these quotes and save them in a file. So let's execute this scrapey spider by doing scrapey crawl, then the name of our spider quote, then dash o output.json to save the output in the output.json file. We don't need to do that though, uh, not necessary. Then once this scrapey operation executes completely, we'll see a bunch of stats that get printed out on the console and should take five or six seconds in total. There we go. Okay, so here, let's start from the top. We can see a few things over here, like how many bytes were requested, how many 200 status codes. Then over here, we can see the elapsed time, how much time was taken, 15.8 seconds. Over here, we can see the finish time, okay? We can see the finish time uh, in a date time object. 2023 is the year, the month, the day, the hour, the minutes, the seconds, I think the milli or microseconds. Then over here is the start time, which is also a date time object. Pretty cool, right? But there's one issue. We got the values over here, but we can't actually see them. Sorry, we can't use them in our code. So let's explore how to do that. What you can do here is create a function called close and you need to have this name called close just like the parse function it's necessary that the close function be called close because scrapey calls this function automatically and this parameter also must be there then what we'll do is start time is equal to self.crawler and yes self.crawler is not something that we've defined anywhere over here but it's something that belongs to the spider which we inherited, so we can use it. So do dot stats dot get value, and now we can put any one of these keys. This is a dictionary. We can put any one of these keys, like the start time, in here. Now this will return the start time. We can do end time is equal to. Let's just copy paste this, end time. Then we can calculate the elapsed time ourselves even though the lapse time was also in this dictionary, uh, but I'm just doing this anyway, just to show you guys, All right? Uh, oh wait, this is finish time, actually, not end time. Let's run this code again, and we'll see the lapsed time again. And uh, you, you need to be careful about where this shows up. You might miss it if you're not careful. It shows up right above the stats over here. So we can see here that this took 10 seconds. Uh, it can take, you know, a different amount of time because of the internet connection and all that and uh, traffic on that website. So this took 10 seconds that uh, we can see that over here and it perfectly matches this as well. So we know our uh, output is correct. So this is how we just got it in code. Let me show you one more thing. This is uh, where we're accessing the value, yes, but we're only doing this at the very end of the code after the scraping is all complete. What if you want it for every item? What you can do is go to settings, then enable the item pipeline, if you don't already have it enabled, then go over here to pipelines, to your pipeline. And a pipeline is basically some place where the scraped item comes in, it can be processed and then it can be returned, you know, out of that pipeline. Right now, this pipeline is empty. It receives an item, but it just directly returns that item without doing any kind of modification because uh, we haven't really configured this pipeline. Um, yeah, pretty much. So over here, we can do print 
spider spider is this parameter spider dot uh, crawler and by the way if you want to learn more about pipelines i have a whole video on that i can't really cover that in this video uh, you know it's practical use so uh, do check out that video if you want to okay so here spider dot crawler dot stats dot get value or let's do uh, get stats okay there's actually something i want you to see i'm gonna run this code again and the thing is that the stats for an item are a bit different than the stats that we get uh, over here. Let's take a look at the stats. Now look, there's only one or two minor differences. Is that because the scrapey spider hasn't finished its completion, right now the stats do not have a uh, elapsed time or finish time key, key value pair. They're not in this dictionary. Only the start time is. So that's just something to keep in mind. You can access the stats over here, but there are just some gonna be missing because the operation hasn't, hasn't completed yet. Okay, but this might come in handy someday. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you wanna learn more content like this in the future, make sure to subscribe to the channel, okay? We have more creepy content coming out.